inside the SpaceX Starship. Elon Musk is developing a vehicle that could be a game changer for space travel. The founding ethos of Elon Musk's private spaceflight company SpaceX was to make life multi-planetary. This is partly motivated by existential threats such as an asteroid collision big enough to wipe out humanity itself. Settling on other planets would place some of the eggs in other baskets, sparing human civilization if one of them were to experience a cataclysm. Musk has often spoke about his dream of building cities on Mars. He believes that settlements would need large numbers of people in order to become self-sustaining. The billionaire SpaceX CEO unveiled this completed version of the Starship prototype in an event at the company's facility in Boca Chica, Texas, over the weekend. Musk promised that the 164 foot tall stainless steel rocket prototype will begin high altitude test flights in the next few months. Meanwhile, Musk has been sharing photos of the Starship's construction progress in recent months on social media and he posted a short video of the inner workings of the rocket prototype on Twitter. Capability and power. It will be capable of carrying up to 100 people to the red planet. The combined system will stand 120 meters tall and have six highly efficient Raptor engines at the rear of the 50 meter long craft. It will be powered by around 28 Raptor engines, providing some 16 million pounds of maximum thrust. But do you know when it will be operational? Stay with us to gain some super knowledge about this starship. Elon Musk's vision for long haul trips to Mars and back which could take up to nine months each way, Musk is looking to install around 40 cabins in the payload area near the front of the upper stage. You could conceivably have five or six people per cabin if you really want to crowd people in. But I think mostly we would expect to see two or three people per cabin, and so nominally about 100 people per flight to Mars, Musk said. The payload bay would also host common areas, storage space, a galley, and a shelter where people could gather to shield from solar storms, where the sun belches out harmful charged particles into space. Starship might also play a role in NASA's Artemis program, which aims to establish a long-term human presence on the moon. In 2020, SpaceX was awarded $135 million by NASA to advance the design of Starship so it could be used as a crewed lunar lander inside the Starship. Let's take the spacecraft first. With its nose coning landing fins, the stainless steel vehicle resembles the rocket ships from the golden age of science fiction. The system is designed to be fully reusable, meaning that the principal hardware elements are not discarded in the sea or allowed to burn up, as happens with some other launch systems, but are instead recovered from space. They can be then be refurbished and flown again, reducing the cost of the whole enterprise. Now. Let's turn to the rocket. Measuring 70 meters long, Super Heavy will be filled with 6.8 million pounds of cryogenic methalox. It should be able to lift at least 100 tons of payload and possibly as much as 150 tons to low Earth orbit. This will make Super Heavy more powerful than the immense Saturn V launcher used for the Apollo moon missions in the 1960s and 70s. The 10 second video posted by Musk shows the view from inside the Starship's cargo bay, with the camera looking upward at the inside of the rocket's nose cone. Launch and refilling. As it ascends from the launch pad, the combined Starship system will begin to pitch over towards intended orbit. When the upper stage separates in space, the Super Heavy flips over while falling back towards Earth. As it descends, Super Heavy will deploy steel structures called grid fins, shaped a bit like potato waffles from the side of the booster. These will help steer the rocket stage back towards its launch pad so it can be flown again. Previously, SpaceX had wanted to ignite Super Heavy's Raptor engines to guide it down to a precision landing on six steel legs. SpaceX does something similar with the first stages of its Falcon 9 rockets, landing them safely on landing pads and drone ships after a launch. But Mr. Musk recently tweeted to say that this thinking had changed. SpaceX now plans to catch the falling booster using an arm on the launch tower. This is the structure that provides engineers and crew members with access to the spacecraft and rocket while they are sitting on the pad before launch. How exactly this catch mechanism will work, however, remains to be seen. Starship is SpaceX's next generation spacecraft that's designed to carry humans and cargo to Earth orbit, the moon, and eventually Mars. Musk's ambitious timeline to reach orbit may not play out as he hoped. Major space projects have a knack for hitting delays, 
but seeing this shiny beast take to the air will be worth the wait. How does the upper stage land? In order to bring other spacecraft back to Earth, engineers have relied on parachutes or designed the vehicle so they can land on the runway. But the Starship upper stage takes a different approach. When it's ready to land, the ship initially re-enters the atmosphere at a 60 degree angle and then belly flops to the ground in the horizontal position. This mode of return relies entirely on the atmosphere to slow the vehicle's descent. The downside is that, in this configuration, Starship is inherently unstable. The vehicle therefore uses four steel landing flaps positioned near the front and rear of the vehicle to control its descent. This is much like a skydiver using their arms and legs to control a freefall. Do you want to have a ride to Red Planet on this Starship? Drop your thoughts below in the comment section. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button to get notified about new updates from us. See you in the next one. Bye.